fans of Space Hawks, the artistic style of a Rogue Trader era of Warhammer 40,000 and Red Ones Go Faster, thank you very much for joining me for a sample review of some Orc miniatures that have been sent to me by Nightmare Miniatures or Nightmare Games. I've only just recently done a review of the Chaos Raider miniatures by Nightmare and you know you'll have probably detected my enthusiasm for how they capture the style of the early rogue trader game artwork so i bought a few at discount and then i've also been sent a few more samples by diego nightmare miniatures that's who we're talking about but what i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to show you around them it's got a selection of metal miniatures here and there's quite a few what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by showing you the ones that I bought at a discount and then I'll show you the ones that were sent to me as free samples. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look around these miniatures, see what I like, examine the quality and just see how authentically they seem to fit with what I said about them being in the style of a rogue trader. As I said, most of these are samples that are being provided to me for review purposes. So if they're good, I'm going to say they're good. If there's any faults, I'm going to draw your attention to those as well. But please do bear that in mind when assessing the opinions I offer in this video. Right, I'm going to start with my favorite, just like we did with the Chaos Raiders. And it's this little runty chap. Now, What we've got here is a Space Orc mutant. And you can see this rather sorry looking creature has a deformed limb that's been well reduced into some sort of disgusting, loathsome talon. And it's carrying a bolt pistol and its stomach is somewhat distended, swollen and ruptured, suggesting that this could well be a follower of Nurgle and indeed we can see from the forehead of the hapless orc a single unicorn-like horn has sprouted forth, perhaps indicating that maybe this could be an orc renegade and it has been awarded, inverted commas, awarded or gifted a horn like a plague bear bears. I bought this miniature because there is a piece of artwork in one of the old, I think it's White Dwarves. It might have been Lost and the Damned, the second volume of the Realm of Chaos books by Games Workshop. It could be from there. I can't quite remember it. I, some, some of these I remember quite clearly. This one I can't. But I do remember a sketch that this has been based on. I saw this one and I thought, oh yes, this is a great miniature. And yeah, very nicely detailed. Yeah, it's just, I mean, if you ever bought the Orcs from the early days of 40k, it's very characterful and consistent with those. The classic set, of course, is a Space Orc Raiders. I think it was actually, was it RTB02 set, Space Orc Raiders, you know, the antagonists to the RTB01 plastic Space Marines box set. Yeah, very good. It's even got this little breather device that's got a tube running into its head. There you go, an Orc Chaos Mutant. So that's the first one. Now, sticking with the theme of chaos, let's go to someone who is less corrupt in body, but equally corrupt in mind. Right, here we've got possibly Orc Noble, or maybe even an Orc Renegade, in a suit of mega armor or powered armor. I suppose we should say powered armor back in the day. And we just set the torso aside. This helmet to me suggests that this is clearly a follower of the Chaos God Corn, or, well, if he doesn't realise it yet, he is certainly going that way. I'm sure, again, this is based on a piece of art. I can't remember where it was. It definitely wasn't Slaves to Darkness. It may have been one of the early Orc Codex books. Um, what was it? Was it Here We Go? Or War Orcs? I think it was War Orcs was the first, wasn't it? And I suspect that the picture was in there. So let's have a look at the model. Got this big power fist. And by orc standards, what is actually quite a sophisticated and tight fitting suit of powered armor, which I really like. It's normally orc armor, or certainly more recent orc powered armor. It's all excessively bulky, it's, it's overly bulky, which is, you know, the style that GW went in, but I do, I do still appreciate the older style. And He's well armed, he's got a, a weapon of comparable sophistication to his armour in the form of this plasma pistol. And that is going to go there. That will need pinning, I think. 
But yeah, so you can imagine what that looks like. As with the other Chaos Raiders that I reviewed, these are supplied without a base. Quite a lot of these don't have any base tabs, so they're going to need firmly attaching to the base that you choose for them. For me, I'll either epoxy them on or maybe do a metal pin, depending. There you go. What I presume is a Cornet Orc follower. And certainly by his war gear, I would say he's a renegade because he appears to be quite well to do. So the next orc is this dude. I can't remember the names of these. I will leave a link in the description and put some of the names of these orcs in as to what they are. So they've all, they've all got quite characterful names. I saw this one and it reminded me of a picture, something from the actual Rogue Trader book. Now this is a big fella, let me just show you size-wise. There's the orc renegade. This guy is huge. And now I'm going to faff around a little bit here, trying to get his gun to line up. Oh gosh, there you go. It's about like that. So he, I, I don't know what the gun is, but it looks quite sophisticated and deadly. It almost might be a plasma cannon. Now I'm trying to remember the artist who did these pictures like this. He did the, I think the artist that might have done it is a guy who did the picture of the breach marines fighting the orcs in Rogue Trader. And there's a, it's quite gory because there's a disemboweled marine lying at the breach that's been shot by one of the orcs and a, an orc getting its arm sliced off by a marine with a chainsaw. But I think that's where, I think it's a drawing by that artist that inspired this, but I might be wrong. As well as his photonic blaster cannon, whatever it may be, he has this little doohickey here which is going to perch on his shoulder, predator style. There's a little plasma blaster, which I thought was a neat little touch. If anyone does recall the piece of art and where it was originally from, please do share it in the comments. We'll be interested to hear. But I imagine this has been some sort of orcoid bounty hunter. And he actually has what appears to be quite a bit of sophisticated war gear in contrast to his undressed body. So those are the three that I bought at a discount. Then we've got another three guys. And let's stick with huge and look at this fella. Now I don't know who sculpts all these. Um, I believe actually Kev Adams is involved in some of them. He's a well-known sculptor. But look at this guy. He's got this huge wolf pelt that he's wearing over his head or a wolf pelt. I think it's like a bear pelt. So yeah, clearly a fearsome warrior. Very um, distinctive 40k early era orc look in every respect. His armour, his head, his teeth, I mean his gun. He's got a stick grenade, that's a nice touch. And he's got his backpack on with lots of gear. So maybe this is like an orc wilderness hunter, I don't know. He looks like he's equipped to be out and about on his own a lot. Size wise, as I said, this is a beast. Here's our bounty hunter. So it's not as tall as a bounty hunter, but he appears bulkier. And if we put him next to the renegade again, yeah, he's a, he's a big cookie. And next to the, the mutant, he's enormous. Yeah, hefty miniature. In terms of the sculpting quality on these so far, I've not seen any faults, just a few mold lines to clean up here and there. And you know, this is very much the same. You can see there's a, a thin mold seam to clean around away on the arm there. But overall, the casting quality on these guys is really very good. You can see there's a bit of a fill in there on that knife. I would cut that away to restore the form there. I don't know if that's a casting fault as such, just a characteristic of the mold, but yeah, you could cut that away clean it up. Many memories of doing uh, work like that on metal miniatures, spending hours of work. What should we do next? Actually, we'll do this guy. We'll do the other full single piece model. There we go. Now this guy's got some, oh, what's he got? So he's got another orky shooter, lots of grenades again, the characteristic armor, some slightly different scale armor on his, uh, on his shoulder. <laughs> A top hat of course with a bullet through it, um, and his huge power claw, very rogue trader style. He's even got a scope on his gun, I wonder if he actually uses that. Oh, and he's got kind of like what appears to be some sort of bionic, or maybe this is almost like a pip boy, isn't it? Strapped onto his arm, or perhaps it's his teleport homer. Maybe he's an orc freebooter or a bounty hunter. 
got this huge wicked sword hanging off his belt. Well, we, he's certainly armed for for taking on anything of all sorts. And I don't know what that is. It's got this little doll strapped to his back. Now, it looks a bit like a grey almost, but not like a grey. Anyone who's got any ideas what the inspiration behind this is, if there is any history or backdrop to it, please do share it. That's a fascinating little detail. Yeah, wow. And then the final guy. Now, this looks like... Is this a mech boy? I think this might be... Oh no, this is like a knob. Right, so we've got a torso. Big, chunky, hefty torso. These are so well cast, you know. Really, really well turned out. Got a hammer. Now, and where does this thing go? Right. Yeah, I think he is a mechanic, actually, because he's got this huge mechanical contrivance of a claw that's attached. Look at that. That's quite incredible. And his entire arm is bionic, actually, when we look at it. He's got a screwdriver, um, not a screwdriver, a spanner. Yeah, he's definitely a mechanic, this guy. And he's got a little uh, doohickey monitor reader thing. Probably tells him if it's going fast enough. Yeah, so that goes there. And then he's got a custom zap gun, as I'm going to call it, which clearly isn't your average orky blaster, but has some gubbins and thinky bits added to it for extra oomy splatting. That's going to go there. Oops, it's going to go on the floor. Let's try that again. Yeah, so that's going to go there. And then he also has this little here head. Let's just have a little look at the casting quality on that. A little bit of cleanup to do on the ribs there. But uh, overall, not much to do at all. And let's just look at this head. So you've got a real classic orc mech head with a bionic eye, lots of tubes and some a metal skull plate with some exhausts, probably for his enhanced orky cogitator brain. It looks like he might go like that and then he's kind of holding his claw up. Or not, maybe he looks the other way. That's a great looking miniature. Another great looking miniature. Well, I suppose you could probably angle the head that way. as well and then he's kind of looking down his pistol very good yeah very good indeed i do like that there you go that's c6 space orcs i have from nightmare miniatures as i said these are some samples that sent me i hope you found that review interesting when i was in conversation with diego he did mention that he's got a kickstarter running at the moment that closes on the 24th of april and it's called the Greenskin Wars, or the, I think it's the New Greenskin Wars. I just thought I'd mention that to you. This is fantasy stuff as opposed to these science fiction orgs. You know, it's not normally my sort of thing, the fantasy style, but if you do like that sort of thing, yeah, it might, might be worth you checking out. I'll leave a link if you're interested in taking a look at that. Yeah, so I have to admit, I've been uh, very impressed by the work of Nightmare Miniatures. I hope you found this look at these miniatures interesting and informative, something a little bit different to what I look on the channel. But again, the reason I've got these and I wanted to try do some content around them is I just like the retro style of the miniatures and I do like that sort of stuff. So that's all my thoughts about these. Um, please do share your own thoughts and observations in the comments section. I'll be very interested to hear as always. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time. And goodbye.